Hello, this is Allie with the Perception Trainers, author of the Perception Diet, Perception Diet, sorry. And today we have part four in our series on emotional mastery. So if you have not watched part one through three, please do that, otherwise this is going to make no sense. Um, and again, remembering that this is not my information, I'm not making this up, I lay no claim to this, this is universal knowledge, okay? Um, I definitely recommend checking out Dr. Bruce Lipton, I recommend checking out um, Martha Beck, I recommend checking out, you know, Mar uh, Ram Das and Eckhart Tolle, we, they're all kind of saying the same thing here, okay? So, in the last video, we were talking about how the the fear, the being in the fear brain, being in the, and left brain dominance, right, where we're thinking all the time to try and predict our future, so that our, you know, we're thinking about our past to in order to predict our future, and at the same time, we are essentially becoming more and more and more estranged and isolated from our emotions because every single time we get triggered by our reality, which is essentially our emotional body calling us back to that initial trauma, that initial abandonment wound, right? And in order that we can heal it, but we've never learned how to actually heal it, okay? So this is the last um, explanation video that I'm going to give you because this is explaining to you why emotional mastery works the way that it does and what it's going to do for you, okay? So the next two videos, I'm going to give you two different meditations that are essentially going to move you in the direction of becoming emotionally masterful. And the purpose of this is not just so that you can remain stoic and calm when things happen to you, okay? It, and the purpose of this is not to uh, get rid of your emotions, the purpose of this is not to become a robot. None of this is true, okay? What this is designed to do is, like we talked about in the other videos, this emotional mastery is essentially helping you to slowly but surely shift yourself from the state of fear where you are in rejection of reality, right? You are, you are in a state of self-destruction, you are in a state of self-denial because learning and growing and understanding deep concepts about who and what you are and who and what reality is, is not possible in the fear state because in the fear state you're just going to be running your programming. So what you learn from 0 to 7, that's going to be your perception of yourself and your perception of your reality and you're just going to repeat that over and over and over again. Even if reality totally like alters itself for you, right? Even if you go from being really really poor and getting picked on and everyone hates you to being a rich millionaire who everybody loves, you're still going to be having the same emotional experience in this new reality that you had as a child if you don't heal this abandonment wound. Because this trauma is going to continue to pull you back to try and get you to integrate that wounding, that fragmented part of your soul that got stuck in the past in those painful ideas and those painful experiences. Okay? So what this is designed to do is to take you out of this fear state where you're essentially repeating the same experiences over and over and over again even with different experiences, but the same emotional experiences, the same perspective experience, you're not actually learning new things about life, you're not learning new things about your reality, you're not actually able to be a co-creative inventor in this state of life. You are simply doing the same things over and over, running a program, right? This is what this process does. It takes you out of that state of fear, where you're in self-destruction and where you're in a program, into a state of love where you are, you start to become capable of being aware of the little I that you are, aware of the ultimate I that you are, aware of nature and the laws of nature and how it works and how you can create within it. Okay? So this emotional mastery takes you from being essentially stuck in a program doing the same thing over and over again, to being a conscious creator. Okay, This is how you become a conscious creator. Being a conscious creator is not sitting there and imagining yourself having a million dollars. Okay, Especially if that's coming from a, a wound that you believe that uh, life is not giving you the right amount of money. Right? Remember, this is a program. That's a program. It's still coming from a state of fear. If you are in a state where you are grabby, right? your manifestations are you trying to create 
a better reality for yourself because you are afraid of a painful thing, that's not conscious co-creation, right? That is you, again, just being lost in thought, being lost in the right brain, not trusting reality and not trusting yourself, trying to avoid pain or gather pleasure for yourself, okay? That's a fear state. When you are emotionally masterful, you are no longer in a state where your entire life is about creating pleasure or avoiding pain, okay? You will then be in a state where you can experience your experience, whatever it is, and you will be in a state of being able to integrate that experience, to learn, grow, and evolve from it. It will take you deeper into understanding yourself and understanding nature, right? Every emotion that you have will teach you something. Everything is expansive. Everything is underlying, like I said, you are in a st when you are in a state of love, even if you're sad, there's an underlying joy. There's an underlying love. There's an underlying understanding of how it's happening. Because again, you're in your right brain, which is capable of processing 11 million bits of information at a time versus 40 in the right brain, right? And so you can have your experience. And literally, it's not like, it's not the opposite state of fear, right? Where you're just nothing now, right? Where you're not trying to create pleasure for yourself, or you're not trying to avoid pain. It's like, it's a completely different experience of life. It's where you can be one with reality. So let me give you this metaphor, okay? Most of us are in the, f I, so yeah, this is the metaphor. Humans have an innate desire to fly. Okay, so think of it like this, right? Humans looked out at the, at the world and like, okay, we want to fly. Look at the birds, that's amazing. They can fly, that's the one thing we can't do. We can crawl, we can forage, we can swim, we can do all the other things that all the other animals can do, but we can't fly like the birds, right? So the first group of consciousness looks at that and says, well, there's obviously this force of gravity that's keeping us stuck to the ground, right? This is a natural law, the law of gravity. And because of this, we cannot have our desire, right? That's a painful thing that we want to be able to fly. We can't. Gravity is what it is. It sucks, but it's just the reality, okay? These people would call themselves realists, right? That just reality just is what it is, and it is opposed to your desire. So it's not right. It shouldn't be that way. It's causing pain, but I'm just going to accept it and then move on with my life, right? Let go of my desire and just accept that this is just how life is. Okay, the second group of people, which would be like our new age community that's happening right now, say, no, um, I believe that my innate desire to fly is good. And, you know, I want to get off the ground because being on the ground is painful. And maybe I have this idea that being in the air would be really fun and be really pleasurable. And I want pleasure and I don't want pain. And gravity seems to be the thing that's in my way. So fuck gravity. I don't believe in it. I'm just not going to believe that it's a thing, I'm not going to give it any power by focusing on it, and I'm just going to go jump off a cliff, because I know that it's what I want. I don't want to believe that gravity exists, because it's holding me back from what I want, right? And therefore, I'm just going to go jump off a cliff and I'm going to fly, because that I want it that badly. And then they go and jump off a cliff and they fall, and they think, what the fuck? Like, life sucks. Life hurts. What, like, life is totally against me. Okay, so these would be the kind of like new age spirituality people, right? You're still moving from a place of trying to avoid pleasure or, or avoid pain or get pleasure, right? From this desire that you've created, but you're still out of alignment with reality. You still believe that something has gone wrong in reality. Gravity isn't, it shouldn't be because it's not in alignment with what you want, which is to get pleasure or to avoid pain, okay? The third group is the awake group, the emotionally masterful group. Okay? The third group says, okay, gravity is what it, first the third group says, I have a creative desire to fly. It would be a creation to move humans from a state where they could not fly to a state where they can fly. That's a creative act. That's a creative co-creation. Gravity is something I cannot do something about, right? I cannot change a natural law. However, I can observe a natural law and learn everything there is to know about it. So we study gravity, we observe gravity, we learn how gravity works, right? We then study the mechanics of flight. How are birds doing it, right? It's happening, we can see it. So what's going on there? How does aerodynamics work? How are they able to essentially use gravity 
to their advantage to make them fly. So we understand, so we look at birds and we look at the, the beasts of the earth that fly, and we understand, we start to learn and observe reality. So we're not separating ourselves out from our desire, and we're not separating ourselves out from reality, we are uniting the two. And in that, we can co-create an airplane. You see what I'm saying? We can take natural law and our desire, and at the same time, use our creativity, use our right brain to create something totally new that was not in an attempt to get away from something painful or go towards something pleasurable. It was the whole experience was pleasurable. You see what I'm saying? The whole experience of um, learning about gravity and doing these experiments of like learning how birds fly and probably failing at making an airplane 85 different times, that whole process was one of love because it was an expansion experiment. You see, it wasn't running an old program of that's just how reality is and it sucks or I don't want to believe that reality is the way that it is so I'm just going to do what I want to do and then reap the consequences and not understand why because you don't understand gravity because you're burning your head in the sand about what actually is happening, right? You are using natural law and the way and what you desire as a creative expression. This is what emotional mastery is. It takes you out of being crushed by reality or being in a opposition and denial of reality, and both of those states lead to pain, into being completely at one with reality, and therefore you experience all of your emotions, you still have all you're still gonna have guidance, but you then become a conscious co-creator. That's what being a conscious co-creator is. So the emotional mastery process that I'm going to lead you through in the next couple of videos is essentially going to teach you first and foremost how to go into that state of loving presence so that you can go back to those abandoned, traumatized parts of yourself that are keeping you stuck in your fear brain and in your programming, not trusting yourself and not trusting reality, right? So that you can integrate. So this is not even about healing, okay? Because healing means that there's something wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you, right? There never has been anything wrong with you. There never will be anything wrong with you. Even the belief that there could be something wrong with you is something that you will integrate through this process, right? All of your trauma wounds, all of the repeated emotional experiences that you think are being caused by different things, are, but are actually the same emotional experience over and over and over again, being triggered by different things, okay? You will integrate those abandonment wounds through learning how to be emotionally masterful. You will learn how to dissociate from your emotion enough that you realize it is not you. Okay, because most of us feel like we start to have, a, we get triggered, we have a negative emotion, we start to feel like that emotion is us, right? We feel drowned, like we're drowning in it, and therefore we must either dissociate from it, or we get totally lost in it and identify with it. Neither of these two things are loving presence. Right? Because then we're trying to fix it or we're trying to run away from it. We're, again, labeling it as wrong and bad and essentially continuing to create that abandonment wound over and over and over again. So we slowly move you to a place where you can first see that you are not your emotion. Okay? That it's an experience you're having and that you can witness it from an outside perspective, which takes you into a whole new level of consciousness even of itself. Okay? That this moves you already closer to a state of love when you can witness an emotion and not feel like you need to do something about it okay and then you're going to start to use imagery and 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 feeling so going into your thought into your right side of the brain so we're not going to be logically trying to figure out what the emotion is trying to tell you we're not going to be looking for words we're not going to be looking for an explanation okay because that stuff doesn't work right to analyzing it is staying in the same state of fear. We think it's something different every time, it's not, because it doesn't change your behavior, it doesn't change your experience of reality, okay? We're going to go into the right brain with imagery and feeling, imagery and feeling, imagery and feeling, which then opens you up to 10 million bits of information at a time, and you are going to start to have an experience where you, the symbol of your emotions, 
the symbols and the pictures and the feelings and the impressions of your emotions start to reveal to you where your abandonment trauma actually is. It's going to take you back to memories where you then learn how to be present with what happened over and over and over again until you complete it within yourself. Okay? And this completion is essentially you being able to be with what happened and to remember these painful traumatic things and have them no longer be painful and traumatic for you. Okay? This is what's going to do it. Where you get to a place where those triggers no longer exist inside of you because you have reintegrated it back inside yourself. Okay? So what's going to happen is you're going to you're going to understand the greater purpose for why that happened. You're going to be able to be in a place where you even have gratitude and and are fully and completely okay with every single thing that happened to you that you once thought was traumatic, that you once labeled as wrong and bad and should not have been, which then essentially right starts to help you reintegrate back into who you are. Right? All these things that you've labeled about yourself that are wrong and bad, you're going to start to see them in a different light, that it's just who you are, and that's perfect, and that's what you're supposed to be doing, and that's what you're supposed to express. And at the same time, it teaches you how not to be at odds with reality. You know, you start to get farther and farther away from this thought of this should have happened or this shouldn't have happened, and you start to just be able to say, what happened is what happened. Right? And it was all for my good. It was all for my expansion. It was all for my growth. And you start to be able in this right brain place to understand so much greater, the greater purpose of everything that happened to you, right? You start to be able to have a much uh, broader perspective and this shifts you out of that fear state into a state of love where literally this is what people are talking about when they tell you to lose judgment and when they tell you to stop thinking, right? When, they, when enlightened people tell you that they don't judge anymore and that they don't think anymore, this is what they're talking about. They're in such a state of alignment with the little I, right? The expression of the divine that they currently are, as well as with what reality is and all of their emotions and all of their experiences. None of them are good or bad. They're all right. They're no longer needing to defend themselves from reality with thoughts about the past that will then try to predict and control their future to create more pleasure and less pain. Because there's no more duality in the sense that pain is bad and I want to avoid it and pleasure is good and I want to have it. You, in a state of love, will still experience pain and you will still experience pleasure, but you won't have the dual sense that pain is bad and I need to get away from it and pleasure is good and I need to get more of it. You will be able to have whatever experience you're having without defending yourself against it because you won't label it as wrong and bad. And then again, at the same time, you will no longer label yourself as wrong and bad. So you've lost judgment, right? But this is a process that happens. It's not about trying to just stop judging. And it's not about just trying to stop thinking. You've got to heal, integrate the parts of you that believe that's necessary in order to defend yourself, right? So this is what this emotional mastery process is. It takes you into your emotion. It helps you separate it out so it doesn't overwhelm you. And then it helps you to feel into it and visualize it so that you can tap into this this right side of the brain that has so much more information so much more symbology so much more everything for you that you literally will expand your consciousness every single time you do this shifting yourself more and more into a state of love every single time you do this and then eventually like i say you will come to a place where you are starting to actualize yourself because you have gone through these ego deaths where you let go of what you have decided reality should and should not be to the point where you are aligning more and more with reality and then your experience of life is one of love and joy no matter what's happening. Even in the midst of your sadness there will be an underlying joy. Even in the midst of your um, losing a best friend or losing a job or whatever it's going to be a completely different experience than the one that you're having in your fear state. And then we can be conscious co-creators. We can understand how reality actually works. We can understand how we work. And then we can create something new rather than running a program. And this is how we're going to change the world. So how this actually affects everything is this is how we're going to change the world. One person becoming emotionally masterful at a time because then you're creative. And we're not going to be running a program anymore because we're just running a program over and over. So reality is the same over and over. Okay?
Questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. Like, subscribe, share, do all that fun stuff. I'll see you in the next one.